Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to talk about selecting the correct predictive modeling technique. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I will give a brief introduction to what is predictive analysis and then I will talk about various predictive analysis techniques that we have. Moving further, I will discuss how you can choose the correct technique and finally to sum up this session, I will discuss a few predictive analysis models as well. So I hope you are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And do check out Edureka's machine learning certification program. The link is given in the description box below. So without any further ado, let us begin our session. So what exactly is predictive analysis? Predictive analysis is the branch of data analysis which is mainly used to predict future events or outcomes. It is solely based on data driven approaches and techniques to reach to conclusions or solutions. The analysis mainly makes use of analytical techniques and predictive modeling in order to find relevant patterns in large data sets. In turn, these patterns can be used to make various opportunities in the businesses by identifying risk and benefit points, etc. Predictive analysis is an anticipatory technique for forward looking solutions and insights to assess any situation. Most of the processes in the predictive analysis incorporates the machine learning terminologies and algorithms for model building, especially to train the models. So it is significantly important to understand how to choose these predictive techniques for model building. And as a beginner, it can help you a lot along the way. So let us quickly take a look at why we do predictive analysis and I'm sure most of us are aware of the significant increase in the generation of data all around us. It has seemingly become quite clear since we are seeing a lot of data driven approaches. But humankind has been storing data since a very long time. Documenting every detail has been a prevalent practice. With the digital age, it has become to process the data a lot more easier as well. But it has also opened a lot of opportunities for the years and years of long and unprocessed data. To understand the relationship between various aspects of the data and make use of it in real life as well. We can use this data for you know various purposes. We have like risk and fraud detection, then there is market analysis, operational movements, operational improvements, campaigning, etc. And one simple example is to use the weather data to study the patterns and use predictive analysis based on the insights to predict the future events. So let's take a look at a few predictive analysis techniques as well. First of all, we have regression guys. So the main goal of regression is the construction of an efficient model to predict the dependent attributes from a bunch of attribute variables. A regression problem is when the output variable is either real or a continuous variable that can be weight or area or salary, etc. We can also define regression as a statistical means that is used in applications like housing, investing, etc. It is basically used to predict the relationship between a dependent variable and a bunch of independent variables. And simple linear regression is a regression technique in which the independent variable has a linear relationship with the dependent variable. It is basically a technique to analyze data set which has a dependent variable and one or more independent variables to predict the outcome in a binary variable, meaning it will have only two outcomes. And the dependent variable is categorical in nature. Dependent variable is also referred as target variable and the independent variables are called as the predictors. Logistic regression is basically a special case of linear regression where we only predict the outcome in a categorical variable. It predicts the probability of the event using the log function. Next up we have classification guys. So classification is the process of categorizing a given set of data into classes and it can be performed on both structured or unstructured data. The process starts with predicting the class of given data points and the classes are often referred to as target label or categories. The classification predictive modeling is the task of approximating the mapping function from input variables to discrete output variables and the main goal is to identify which class or the category the new data will fit into. Now let us try to understand this with a simple example guys. So a heart disease detection can be identified as a classification problem and it's a binary classification since there can only be two classes which is basically has a heart disease or does not have a heart disease. 
So the classifier in this case needs training data to understand how the given input variables are related to the class. And once the classifier is trained accurately, it can be used to detect whether heart disease is there or not for a particular patient. Since classification is also a type of supervised learning, even the targets are also provided with the input data. And then we have clustering guys. So clustering is basically, you know, dividing data points into homogeneous classes or clusters. So the points in the same group are as similar as possible. And then the points in different groups are as dissimilar as possible. So when a collection of objects is given, we put the objects into group based on similarity. So that is what clustering is all about. And then we have another technique which is time series guys. So the time series model comprises a sequence of data points captured using time as the input parameter. It uses the last year of data or you know the previous data to develop a numerical metric and predicts the data using that metric. It's basically a means of understanding a singular metric is developing over time with a level of accuracy beyond simple averages. So it also takes account uh, seasons of the year or events that could impact the metric as well. And next up we have forecasting. So forecasting is nothing but using the historical data to make predictions or numeric predictions on a new data based on the learning from the previous data. Now that we know what these various techniques are, let us understand how to choose which one would be the best one for us while working on any data. So there are a few factors that you should consider while choosing a model. But before that, before talking about the deciding factors, let us go through the processes before a predictive analysis before you start building the model. First off, we have the problem statement guys. So problem statement tells a lot of things about the project or how you should approach it. If you're looking at the problem statement, you'll be able to know what kind of target you're looking at. So in a heart disease condition guys, let's say for an example, we have a problem statement to decide or to analyze or predict if a patient has a heart condition or not. So with that said, we have already figured out the target variable, which is going to be categorical in nature, which means it basically will have only two values. That is one has a heart disease or does not have a heart disease. So it becomes quite clear to us in the problem statement only. We're going to use the classification technique in this particular example. But then there are a few problems where you will not be able to figure out which kind of target variable you will be choosing or what are all the independent factors will be involved in your analysis. So you move on to the next one, which is extraction and loading and you basically analyze all your data, you know, and, and transform it and try to make use of uh, all the information that you get from visualization and all these processes to understand what kind of variables you're looking at and then comes the factors to consider before going for the model, which is what is the target variable. So if the target variable is continuous, you should go for the regression analysis. And if the target variable is categorical, you can go for the classification analysis. And if you're not able to find a target variable, don't worry guys, you can probably go for a clustering analysis. So you'll know which points are similar, which points are not similar, making it a classification or, you know, making clusters. And then you can perform classification on those clusters as well. The next question you should be asking is, is your data linearly separable? And there is no direct way to actually determine it. So we can go ahead by choosing different models. I mean, you can compare different models to see if your data is actually linearly separable or not. Then the next factor would be the size of the data. You have to look for factors like the size of data to determine the possibility of overfitting and underfitting the model. Also, some models may not work efficiently with small data. So these are some deciding factors for choosing a model before you train the model with the training data. And let us take a look at a few machine learning models so that we can use for predictive analysis. The first one is linear regression. So linear regression is to be used when the target variable is continuous and the dependent variable or variables is continuous or a mixture of continuous and categorical. And the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable has to be linear. So that is when you know when you can use a linear regression. After that we have logistic regression. So logistic regression does not require a linear relationship between the target variable and the dependent variables. The target variable is binary assuming a value of either one or zero or maybe you know true or false or something or dichotomous as well. Then we have the K means clustering model guys. So K means involves placing unlabeled data points in separate groups based on similarities and this algorithm is used for the clustering model as well. After that we have neural networks. So neural networks help to understand or help to cluster and classify the data guys. 
so these algorithms are modeled loosely after the human brain and are designed to recognize patterns then we have decision tree so a decision tree is a map of the possible outcomes of a series of related choices it allows an individual or organization to weigh possible actions against one another based on their costs probabilities and benefits as the name goes it uses a tree like model of decisions and they can be used either to drive informal discussion or to map out an algorithm that predicts the best choice mathematically after that we have time series guys so the time series regression analysis is a method for predicting future responses based on response history and the data for a time series should be a set of observations on the values that a variable takes at different points in time so these are a few models that we have for predictive analysis and these are only a few models and there are other models also that we can use for predictive analysis and with that said uh, let's also see a few applications of predictive analysis so we can use it for finance guys so predictive analysis in finance can help in uh, identifying the risk detection or the risk detection model to identify any fraudulent transactions or uh, loans that you can detect using the predictive analysis then there is stock prediction as well you can gather a lot of data in time and forecast a prediction that can be taken into account for different stocks and there goes a lot of process behind this but for as far as the application goes stock prediction is a pretty good uh, application of predictive analysis in uh, finance then we have governments guys so governments are using predictive analysis for campaigning they're using it for weather detection weather uh, prediction there is disaster management they're using predictive analysis for you know predicting the impact of policies different policies that they are making and they're making surveys etc we can use the predictive analysis in healthcare for early detection of diseases such as cancer any heart ailments that may or may not be a part of your life several years later so it helps in predicting all those diseases or you know conditions at an early stage and we can also use a uh, predictive analysis in manufacturing we can uh, actually identify production failures and uh, work on it using the prediction analysis then there is sport franchises using a uh, predictive analysis to you know predict the outcome of uh, certain events in the leagues or something like that they are trying to make sense of what kind of match they have the best probability or the best prediction of winning the chances of winning they have or if they don't have any winning chances what are the you know the basic points or basic insights that they are getting from the data that they should work on to win that particular game or a match or a league and then they, we have uh, telecom industries using predictive analysis for customer support you know they're trying to segregate or segment the customers into groups that they are able to work on them based on their prediction and uh, now that we have come to the end of the session guys I hope you are clear with the concept discussed in this session and uh, to know more about the techniques and models discussed in this session check out the various tutorials we have in the machine learning series on our YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka and also check out Edureka's machine learning certification program the link is given in the description box below and if you have any questions mention them in the comment section and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!